Good morning. Welcome to this very special event. Most importantly, this is a day for students to walk across our stage and become graduates of BCIT. But this is also a day for all of you, friends and family, who join us to celebrate these accomplishments. My name is Brian Weeb. Yes, I had to read that part. I am a faculty member in the Radio Arts and Entertainment program, and I am your Master of Ceremonies this morning. I would first like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of the Coast Salish people, which includes the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. I would also like to acknowledge our interpreters joining me on stage today, Brooke and Jillian. Now before we start, I'd like to recognize that today is Pink Shirt Day. I couldn't wear a pink shirt, but I've got the button. The theme this year is lift each other up. It's a simple but powerful message encouraging us to look beyond our differences and celebrate the things that make us unique. When we lift each other up, we see past the things that separate us and see instead the things that unite us as people. So let us all commit to sharing small acts of kindness and love that will turn into bigger actions to lift each other up. Next, let's move on to a few housekeeping items. We do have a professional photographer here with us today from Artona. Two professional photos will be taken of each graduate immediately after they cross the stage. Image previews, along with optional order information, will be emailed and mailed to students within a week. We encourage you to take any personal photos of your graduate following the ceremony. Artona photographers are also available for individual portraits and with family members after the ceremony. You can follow the signs from the lobby up the stairs to room 3040. They look awesome. We are also doing a live stream of the video of the ceremony right now, actually, at bcit.ca. So hi, if you're watching on our live stream. What this means, though, for you is that there's no need to capture your own video of the ceremony. The link to the professional video will remain on our website for several months. You can view it again, or you can even just download it for yourself to view later. Now, we want to make this an enjoyable occasion for everyone. So once you've texted or tweeted or Snapchatted or TikToked, or put something on Facebook, or talked, how about that? Please ensure that your phone is turned to silent during the ceremony. Now our processions are about to enter the auditorium. Our Piper Vern Kennedy will lead our faculty and platform party, followed by our soon-to-be graduates. I'd ask you to now please rise to greet our processions, and please remain standing until after the singing of our national anthem. Our processions begin with our faculty and our platform party.
And now, family and friends, please welcome the Class of 2020. remain standing and join in the singing of our national anthem, led by Stephanie Standerwick. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. Stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you, Stephanie. Would everyone please be seated? I'd now like to ask Tammy Pierce to come forward. Tammy is an Associate Director of Indigenous Initiatives and Partnerships. 
She works collaboratively with the BCIT community to implement the framework for action and accountability outlined in an Indigenous vision. Hello, graduates, family, and friends. You heard my Christian name. My traditional name is Sigunitsum, and I'm from the community of Kitsum Kalem in the Simshan Territory. I am absolutely honored to be here and share in this celebration with you. This marks an exciting time for you and a huge milestone that you have worked so hard to achieve. This year has been an exciting year for BCIT Indigenous Initiatives and Partnerships as we are implementing our Indigenous vision. We have committed to continuing to enrich our campuses with Indigenous wisdom, knowledge, and traditions. Through our Indigenous vision and action plans, we continue to fulfill the promise of a richer educational journey for everyone in our community. And yes, there is much work yet to be done. Canada has a tragic history with Indigenous peoples and education. It's clear that the purpose of residential schools was not for educating. The false act of education is what got us here, and I'm certain meaningful education is our way out. As a graduate of BCIT, you're bound for exciting careers that have limitless potential. Congratulations on your hard work to achieve your credential. So today, on the day of your convocation, I ask you to take a moment to think about what you can do as a graduate and a leader to help our communities heal and move forward. I ask that you carry the spirit of reconciliation from this institute and bring it forward into your workplaces, your communities, and your homes. Congratulations on this incredible achievement. I'd now like to welcome the Indigenous Women's Ensemble, Maguro, who will perform a traditional song of welcome and celebration. I'd like to share a song with you of welcome, of, of honor, of healing from the Onkapatwa territory, which is where the two rivers meet, the Thompson and the Fraser River. It's a healing song that was shared with us uh, by the late Shirley James. Yahweh. Thank you very much, that was wonderful. I would now like to introduce our platform party. I'll ask them to stand when I call their names and to please remain standing. 
please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced. Emil Bosniak, President, Alumni Association. James Rout, Associate Vice President, Education, Support, and Innovation. Jennifer Figner, Chair, Education Council and Associate Vice President, Implementation and Integration. Kathy Shedlacek, Dean, Academic Planning and Quality Assurance. Kathy Young, Representative, Board of Governors. Sarah Bell, Keynote Speaker, Chief Operating Officer, BC Children's Hospital and Sunny Hill Health Center for Children, and Interim Chief Nursing Officer and Head Interprofessional Practice and Patient Experience, Children's and Women's Health at the Provincial Health Services Authority. Kathy Kinlock, President. Tom Romer, Vice President, Academic. Lisa Collins, Vice President, Students. Lisa Chu, Dean, School of Health Sciences. Kim Dotto, Dean, Applied Research and Technology Center. Donna Mackay, Registrar. Chris Rogerson, Director, Student Success. Adam Nguyen, Vice President, Equity and Sustainability, BCIT Student Association. Ken Zelischuk, Director, BCIT Faculty and Staff Association. Shelley Fraser, Associate Dean, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Kathy Kennedy, Associate Dean, Specialty Nursing. Craig Larson, Associate Dean, Diagnostic and Advanced Practice. Everyone, your platform party. I now call upon President Kathy Kinlock for her opening remarks. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm so excited to be with you here this morning to share in this special milestone for graduates, your convocation ceremony. You know, graduates, you've earned an impressive credential and the right to be excited about your future. And there's no better place to have learned all of this uh, as at BCIT. This day is all about you. But before you cross the stage, let's acknowledge some other very impressive people in the room. First, there are friends and families of, of our graduates. To those people who are here today and those who are not able to make it and will watch online, you have supported our grads in countless ways, and it's largely because of you that they are here today. Second, our faculty and staff. You've worked so hard to get our students here, and I'm proud of, of how the work that you continually do and how special today is for you. And I, I can just uh, suggest to the audience, as the students cross the stage today, you'll see the pride in the faculty. Let's give them a round of applause. Before we turn our attention to you graduates, so I ask that you please take a moment and stand and give a shout out and thank the people in this room who have supported you. Can you do that? Be noisy for a few minutes. Just stand and give them a big cheer. Thank you. I heard some hey mums there. <laughs> So graduates, I now turn to you. Thank you for putting your faith in us. Thank you for supporting one another and for your perseverance. I understand you need that at PCIT. Each of you has played a role in helping us deliver on our ambitious vision, empowering people, shaping BC, and inspiring global progress. I know BCIT is not an easy road. We demand a lot but we also promise a lot. We promise graduates who are adept in their field, yet humble in their character, citizens who strive for personal success and yet success for the world, innovative thinkers who will solve some of the great issues of our time. And with this group, I believe we've delivered on that promise. Graduates, this day of celebration is a moment to reflect proudly on your own accomplishments and those of your fellow graduates. 
Now, I wish I had time today to say a few words about each and every one of you, but I know you want to get out and celebrate, so I won't do that. Um, you each have remarkable stories, but instead I'd like to talk about a few exceptional students who exemplify the best of BC IT. First, I'd like to acknowledge Ray Lee. Ray, are you here? Ray Lee, are you, can you stand, Ray? <laughs> he doesn't know why he's standing, but Ray, I just want you to keep standing, okay? <laughs> Some of you will know him from a faculty perspective, but I want to talk a little bit about Ray. He's a faculty member of our medical radiography program, and also he, today he's a graduating student. So you see students, life keeps, our learning keeps going on and on. So when he wasn't in the classroom or the lab, Ray was earning a Bachelor of Health Sciences, magnetic re resonance imaging, known as MRI, options, studying part-time through online and distance learning. And congratulations, Ray. You must be enjoying your newfound free time. Can, well done. <laughs> Congrat Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. Anthem Post Postnikov and Victoria Holmes, could you stand? Anthem and Victoria are graduating today, each earning a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, a degree that I hold as well, so someday you well could be president of BCIT. <laughs> as healthcare professionals in training, our students do a number of clinical rotations. We often hear anecdotally about the professionalism and courtesy shown by our student nurses during their clinicals. Both Anthem and Victoria's clinical, ins clinical instructors were so impressed with their leadership their collaboration, advocacy, that they separately took time to write down the, their achievements in writing. And I'll read some quick excerpts just as an example. Anthem recognizes that in order to provide safe patient care to our downtown east side population, she needed to come to the bedside with a non-judgmental attitude and a willingness to hear the stories of others. I consistently saw Anthem helping others, lifting others up, encouraging words, and showing leadership through example by using professionalism and pragmatism. And Victoria's clinical instructor wrote, Victoria demonstrates much respect and loyalty to her goal with marginalized populations. She wants to create a therapeutic relationship where her clients are respected, valued, and encouraged. She's a great role model for the profession of nursing, and I'd say you're great role models for BCIT as well, thank you. If I could, I would ask each member of this graduating class uh, today to stand, but I know again that you'd like to get out uh, sometime soon, but it, we're so proud of the many achievements each of them have done. Ray, Anthem, and Victoria, and all of you newly minted healthcare professionals before me, you have a wonderful opportunity and responsibility to touch many lives during the course of your day-to-day -day work. I hope you know that you make BCIT so very proud of you. Kindness, professionalism, determination. <clears throat> These are important BCIT traits, traits demonstrated at one time or another by all our, grad <clears throat> excuse me, all our graduates I see before me. I'd like to introduce to you one more special graduate today. Would Caroline Sabrai please stand? Caroline. Now, Caroline is one of the last students to cross our stage today, in the, and she's graduating in the Pediatric Emergency Specialty Program, which is no small task. So I'd like to ask all of our graduates to return to their seat after receiving their credential and to be present for Caroline's moment as she crosses the stage, just as she's going to watch each of you cross the stage before her. And for your patience and willingness to be outed today, Caroline, we're going to treat you to dinner, and don't worry, it's not at BCIT. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so
So graduates, the adventure is just beginning. The road does not end here, and neither should your education. Whether it's back at BCIT, through additional education, or in your new roles in industry, keep learning, read, travel, be a proud BCIT alum, talk to, your, uh, talk to strangers, and be curious. Most of all, have fun. You really have earned it. Congratulations. <laughs> One more little plug, and you'll hear it a couple of times today, but today marks the end of your current program, but not the end of your relationship with BCIT. We have a large and impressive alumni body you're going to hear about, so please stay in touch. You have my sincere admiration. Congratulations to each and every one of you who has made today possible. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. I now like to call upon Kathy Young, who will bring greetings on behalf of the board and introduce our keynote speaker. Good morning. You all look marvelous. I'm delighted to be here today to congratulate our graduates and to commend our faculty and staff on behalf of the BCIT Board of Governors. To all the students in the audience today, well done. When you made the choice to come to BCIT, you changed the course of your future. The time and hard work you have invested here will open many doors. Employers know that when they hire a BCIT grad, they're getting someone who can hit the ground running. Our grads are known for their drive, their talent, and their ingenuity. Whichever path you embark on, you will make a difference. Today you are surrounded by family and friends who are incredibly proud of all that you've accomplished. You've also earned the confidence of your instructors. They know just what it took to get here today. Each of you deserves to feel enormously proud. Your time at BCIT has come to an end, but your achievements won't stop here. I challenge you to build on everything you've learned and accomplished during your time at BCIT. Commit yourself to making an impact within your future workplaces and within your community. On behalf of the BCIT Board of Governors, our warmest congratulations to you all on your academic and personal achievements. And this morning, I also have the pleasure of introducing Sarah Bell, Chief Operating Officer at the BC Children's Hospital and the Sunny Hill Health Center for Children. Sarah is also the Interim Chief Nursing Officer and the Head Interprofessional Practice and Patient Experience for Children's and Women's Health at the Provincial Health Services Authority. She is passionate about trauma-informed care and supporting the implementation of the Canadian Standard for Psychological Health and Safety in the Workplace. As a proud BCIT nursing alumna, Sarah serves as a member of the BCIT Inspire Campaign Cabinet. Please join me in welcoming Sarah Bell. Thank you very much, Kathy. Not sure how this is going to go. Right. Thank you. As a very proud graduate of BCIT School of Health Sciences, I am honored and privileged to be here today to address the graduating class of winter 2020. This is a time to reflect on what you've already accomplished and what opportunities lie before you. It's also a perfect time to show your appreciation for all of those cheerleaders and supporters who have helped you to get to this place. Some of them may be here in this audience and some may not. There will be those teachers, mentors, friends, and family members who have propelled you forward, who have been there when you've not been sure where to go, and have been supporting you in ways that you can't even quantify. To each and every one of these champions, a great big thank you. Success is never born on an individual without the help of others. Don't let anyone have you believe that that's the case. I remember being in this very building 25 years ago as a nursing class valedictorian, standing up in front of a slightly smaller group of people to recite the nurse's pledge. I was most proud to have my grandma in the audience, sitting up in the back with other members of my family. It was so important to me that she was here. We had always been very close. Up until she died at the age of 91, I hadn't really realized how similar our paths had been. 
Each of us had completed degrees at university in the arts before later preparing for our careers in nursing. As I watched her in her later years as a nurse, um, sorry, it was her identity as a nurse and that role in her community that grounded her. She went by the handle Nurse Bell and even near the very end of her life was known to check in on her neighbors to change simple bandages, to make sure they were eating properly and were taking their medications as directed. Her passion gave her purpose and she leveraged this to stay connected to her profession and her neighbors. She was the one who told me that once a nurse, always a nurse, and she certainly did prove that to be true. What wasn't clear to me on that day when I graduated from BCIT was where my healthcare education would take me. At that time, I really didn't know what was possible. Since, I've had many roles incorporating additive skills with every change, from bedside and community nursing into the private sector, to motherhood, and back to healthcare. To be very honest, it's not what I had planned at all. I remember having a rather amusing interview with a professor at UBC when I was applying for my MBA, who after reviewing all of the different things I'd done in my life, asked me if I actually knew what I wanted to be when I grew up. Being over 40 at the time, I had to tell him that I really didn't know. When I was growing up, it was more likely that a person would select a profession or career and stick to it. These days, it's expected that the average person will change their career five to seven times over their lifetime. The requirement to remain adaptable to rapid change and advances in technology creates a great deal of choice, but it also requires an appreciation for the necessity of continuous learning, and it's a good thing that BCIT is here to support us. BCIT is a special place. It is remarkable how many graduates are employed in their area of interest immediately upon graduation a tribute to the incredible leadership and the amazing instructors who are committed to sharing their real life expertise with students. One of the really amazing things that BCAT is able to do is to bring people together to learn who have different experiences with education and work. For some of you, you will come to BCIT directly from high school. For others, you may have been out in the workplace for some time, or perhaps you've completed studies in another post-secondary education. It may even be the case that you have returned to BCIT for further education. However you have come to this day, you have elected to enter this incredible field at a really exciting time. Providing exceptional health care is every bit an art as it is a science. I am confident that each of you has the requisite technical skills to provide the best care to the people who come to you. That really is a guarantee of enrollment at BCIT. You have also been fortunate to have the opportunity for your studies to be integrated into real life situations to enable you to practice these skills with people. You will need to keep these companies up to date, of course, but it will be essential that you continue to grow your appreciation for the value and agency of the individuals with whom you work. In fact, in some ways, it's the technical skills that are the easy part. When I was asked if I would consider coming here today to stand up and give my thoughts and perhaps provide some advice, I thought, who am I to do that? And what do I really know? I couldn't really come up with a ready answer, so I thought, no problem, I can work this out. I went to BCIT after all, and I can problem solve. I sent out an email to a disparate group of friends of different ages and various educational backgrounds, an elementary school principal, a bike salesperson, an architect, a couple of students, an executive assistant, a retired businessman, and my eight-year-old niece, Ruby. The email had two questions. What was the most important thing you learned at school? And what was the one thing you wish you'd learned at school before you left? And I didn't place any specifications on what school meant. Some of the results were totally entertaining. Needless to say, my bike salesperson friend needs to get a grip and learn how to make his bed, which apparently he missed along the way. If he'd been studying nursing in 1992 at BCIT with me, he'd have had that one nailed down. <laughs> the feedback for the most part was somewhat expected. It included a recognition that formal education is just a starting point, that learning is something you do every day, and that our mistakes make for some of the best lessons of all. On this 14th annual Pink Shirt Day, it is fitting that the most poignant response I received was from my niece, who at eight years of age said the most important thing that she had learned at school is to be kind to each other. This is such an important message. It really applies universally, but in healthcare, 
being kind is an imperative. Kindness has its roots in empathy, the connection that allows us to put ourselves in someone else's shoes and have a better understanding of what that person is thinking or feeling. Being kind can make the difference between how teams relate to each other, the comfort they feel speaking up in a group, ultimately improving patient care and patient safety. Being kind also changes the way we perceive each other's behavior, enabling us to go from a place of judgment to understanding. This can alter not only a patient's experience of receiving health care, but the environment for everyone involved. This can also change how you perceive and find meaning and connection to the important work that you do. We are in such an interesting place in healthcare. With the advent of new and emerging technologies, geographical space is being diminished by our ability to connect. The way we provide and practice healthcare is changing, and rapidly. In fact, I'm not confident we can fully appreciate how quickly we will continue to turn invention and research into practice. It will be important for each of you to figure out how to remain flexible in this quickly changing landscape to be able to continue to learn and to adapt to these changes. BCIT has prepared you well for this, and as you take the next steps in your career, you will be confident knowing you have the tools you need to succeed. Healthcare is really more than a job. It's truly a calling. Sometimes your work will be hard and your days long. No matter what area you have chosen, whether you will be working in diagnostics, in nursing, or in workplace and public health, you will be privileged to be part of the journey of other people and their families as they navigate sometimes difficult situations. You will know things about them that they may not share with others, and you will carry their stories with you. The privilege of knowing others in this way is also a huge responsibility, and there will be times when you could feel overwhelmed. You will care for your patients and their families, but it is just important that you take care of yourself and your colleagues to be kind to yourself and each other. The sustainability of the healthcare system is going to be reliant on you. And I really don't mean to be overly dramatic about this, but we all have an important play, part to play in ensuring that top-notch care continues to be available. Of all of the concerns that keep me up at, awake at night, the greatest is knowing whether or not we will be able to staff our hospitals and health centers with enough specially trained people to meet the needs of our population. These care providers will need to reinvent ways of working together to adapt to the changing environments, all the while remembering the importance of keeping the needs of human beings at the very centre. You have the advantage of exceptional training and the experience of building and working in high-functioning teams. You will take these experiences and your skills and translate them into practice for now and for our future. My hope for you is that while you are doing this, you will stay connected to each other and to BCIT. My most sincere congratulations to each and every one of you. Thank you, Sarah. All right, now we come to that exciting moment when our graduates are about to cross the stage. Here's the process that we will follow. The students will leave the auditorium and return through the side door on my left. They hand me their credential, I'll read their name, and then I'll return the credential. Then our graduates will cross the stage. Now, it's cold and flu season, so we ask that our graduates and our platform party to please refrain from shaking hands, and instead, please smile and nod, fist bumps are okay, Salutes are fine as a warm exchange of congratulations. Graduates crossing the stage will meet Kathy Kinlock, Sarah Bell, Kathy Young, Tom Romer, Lisa Collins, the dean of their school, and our alumni association rep, who will gift them with their BCIT pin. Now, you might also see faculty members coming forward to support the students that they have instructed over their time here. It's a special connection between our students and our faculty that is an important part of the BCIT experience. Graduates will then exit the theater via stage right over here and be directed to a special area where our professional photographers, remember I mentioned them, will be waiting to take a photo of them with their credential. Graduates will then be directed back to their seat. 
Now, as Kathy mentioned earlier, we want to make sure that all of our graduates, from the very first across the stage to our final graduate, are equally and respectfully acknowledged as they receive their credential. So we ask graduates to please return to your seat, and along with all of our guests, continue to be present and recognize your fellow graduates in their important moment. Would our platform party please take their places to congratulate our graduates. <laughs> We're almost ready. All right, remember what I said about tweeting and talking and texting and TikToking, Snapchatting, Insta stories? Hopefully your phones are off. <laughs> All right, here we go. Graduating with distinction, Jacqueline Nicole Wallace. This is the Bachelor of Health Science Magnetic Resonance Imaging. Graduating with distinction, Ray Chang Lee. Now the Diploma in Cardiology Technology, graduating with distinction, <laughs> Jillian Ann Barden. There you go, Jillian. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Alana Gabrielle Holt. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Olivia Sandberg. Graduating with distinction, Elizabeth Francis Whittingham. Now the diploma in diagnostic medical sonography, graduating with distinction, Jacqueline Marie Carson. Graduating with distinction, Stephanie College. Graduating with distinction, Christina Dimitrienko. Graduating with distinction, Brooklyn Jung. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Valerie Ann Kusai. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Katie Lewinick. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Sarah Kim McCabe. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Jaina Jade Plowman. Graduating with distinction, Michaela Chelsea Tumber. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Hannah Woloschuk. Congratulations. Now the diploma in medical radiography. Graduating with distinction, Madeline Dawn Adama. Graduating with distinction, Trudy Dawn Barr. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, 
Graduating with distinction, Cassidy Monique Bone. Graduating with distinction, Nicole Michelle Billington. Graduating with distinction, Manheet Brar. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Eric Braun. Congratulations, Eric. Graduating with distinction, Sarah Burton. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Gian Carlo Justiniano Canonizado. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Zoe Jade Madeline Chaves. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Amrit Chima. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Amandeep Singh Dolku. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Tiana Iris Dykstra. Graduating with distinction, Mariah Farley. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Kirsten Carol Ann Futrell. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Andrea Garcia. Graduating with distinction, Nicole Hislop. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Nisha Kak. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Dina Kuri. Congratulations. Alyssa. Clewer. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Alicia Knight. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Gagandeep Kaur Kular. Congratulations. <laughs> Mason Y. Liu. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Jessica Claire Rowe. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Kerrigan Arlene Schwitte. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Jesse Dallas Shearer. Graduating with distinction, Katie Elizabeth Ubels. Graduating with distinction, Ryan Alexander Venn. Graduating with distinction, Madison Margaret Weber. Graduating with distinction, Guangdong Zhuang. Congratulations. Now the diploma in nuclear medicine. Graduating with distinction, Javaria Abbasi. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Chelsea Nicole Hoffman. Graduating with distinction, Lydia Dawn Perry. Congratulations. 
now the Bachelor of Technology in Environmental Health. Our first graduate is Jeremy Chu. Graduating with distinction, Adora Kwong. Graduating with distinction, Christine Sweezy. Now the Certificate in Occupation Health and Safety graduating with distinction is Amy Marie Banach. Graduating with distinction, Sean Cancella. Here you go, Sean. Don't forget that. Sure. Graduating with distinction, Jenny Elizabeth Small. Now the Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Graduating with distinction is Chelsea Leanne Allen. Graduating with distinction, Yu Bai. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Candice Bateson. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Christy Block. Graduating with distinction, Haley Ann Boyd. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Melani Brotono. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Natalia Castaneda. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Graduating with distinction, Chia Swan Jasmine Jang. Graduating with distinction, Sarah Chow. Graduating with distinction, Z Hang Candy Chen. Graduating with distinction, Morgan Nicole Chow. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Nicole Foreman. Hey, Nicole. Oh, don't forget that. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Philip Gallant. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Lisa Catrice Go. Graduating with distinction, Victoria Good. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, William Jacob Grimm. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Ying Guan. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Miranda Edith Harris. There you go. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Carmen Lee Hein. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Victoria Adara Holmes. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Megan Jameson. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Nell Jones. Don't forget that, Nell. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Madeline King. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Terrell Close. Here, 
Trail, don't forget that. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Melissa Elizabeth Kuiper. Graduating with distinction, Serena Z. Wing Kwong. Graduating with distinction, Tanya Lahulek. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Lucina Lai. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Sophia Lam. Congratulations, there you go. Graduating with distinction, Annie Lam. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Jillian Marie Lambeth. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Nicole Allison LaPlante. Graduating with distinction, Tiffany Leong. Congratulations, thank you. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Serena Sui Jun Lin. Graduating with distinction, Bay B. Lu. Graduating with distinction, Alyssa Magahis. Congratulations, thank you. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Kim Mascardo. Here's Kim, don't forget that, thank you. Graduating with distinction, Paula McMurray. Graduating with distinction, Amanda Megley. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Rihanna Lynn Mitchell. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Kathleen Moyer. Oh, Kathleen, here you go. Graduating with distinction, Natalie Maloney. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Carly Monroe. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Denna Namey. Graduating with distinction, Monica Ng. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Kathy No. <laughs> Kathy, whoa, hello. Thank you very much. Graduating with distinction, Angie Huynh. Graduating with distinction, Jesse O. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Ashley Desiree Ouellette. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Quinlan Graham Phillips. Graduating with distinction, Anthem Posnikoff. Congratulations. Christine Prasad. Congratulations, thank you. Jennifer Michelle Rubin.
Graduating with distinction, Devon Sale. Graduating with distinction, Kristen Santema. Graduating with distinction, Alia Shimanke. Graduating with distinction, Allison Scott. Graduating with distinction, Nicole Elisa Sommer. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Mia Shaleen Stonehouse. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Joseph Tam. Congratulations. Graduating with distinction, Margaret Tanujaja. Graduating with distinction, Jordan McCowan Tevez. Graduating with distinction, Annie Tran. Graduating with distinction, Lam T. Trong. Graduating with distinction, Arnold Sai. Here, Arnold, don't forget that. Thank you. Graduating with distinction, Janelle Tucker. Graduating with distinction, Amanda Turchett. Graduating with distinction, Carly Verdell. Graduating with distinction, Megan West. Graduating with distinction, Xavier Yi. Graduating with distinction, Melody Zhao. Now we've got the Bachelor of Science in Nursing Specialty Nursing and Critical Care Nursing Specialty. Graduating with distinction, Zerlina Chan. Now the Emergency Nursing Specialty graduating with distinction is Deborah Jane Nordman. Now we've got the perinatal nursing specialty. Graduating is Olajumok Takode. Congratulations. Now the perioperative nursing specialty, graduating with distinction, Marie Josephine Landry. Now the Diploma in Medical Radiography, graduating with distinction, is Brian Gian. <laughs> now the Advanced Certificate in Pediatric Emergency Nursing Specialty, graduating with distinction, is Caroline Sabrawi. Thank you, Platform Party. 
Now, as our students return from their professional photos backstage, I'll remind you that there are image previews and, of course, an option to order those photos. And that will actually be emailed or uh, mailed to students within the next week. All right. Now, I'd like to call forward Jennifer Figner, the chair of the Education Council. Jennifer. Good morning. Throughout the academic year, it's the role of Education Council to advise BCIT's Board of Governors on a variety of educational policies, priorities, and programs. So we're the group that review new programs when we launch them here at BCIT. We review changes to our existing programs as we update them to continue to be relevant to industry, as well as set criteria for awards that some of you are receiving, academic standing, and of course the examinations that you all know and love. So through this, we're involved in many aspects of the programs that you have all completed in order to earn your credentials here today. The certificates, the diplomas, and the degrees that you're graduating with. This morning, as Chair of Education Council, I get to do the fun part. So graduates, I'm going to ask please that you once again stand. And flip the tassel on your cap to the left-hand side, signifying you are now officially a graduate of BCIT. Please join me, everyone, in welcoming the graduating class of 2020. She gets the fun part. <laughs> Please be seated. I would now like to welcome Emil Bosniak, president of the BCIT Alumni, Alumni Association, of course, which now you are each a member. Emil. Wow. Good morning, everybody. Feels like yesterday, 32 years ago, I was sitting where you are now eager to take on the world and wondering where my career would lead me. And I have to say, thanks to BCIT, it's been a pretty incredible journey. On behalf of the BCIT Alumni Association, I want to congratulate each and every one of you. Today you are joining the growing family of BCIT alumni, now 185,000 strong. BCIT alumni are everywhere, in every sector, conquering today's complex world. Our alumni are true examples of why BCIT matters. So now, as a graduate of BCIT, you are now members of the BCIT Alumni Association. Whether you choose to work here in British Columbia or across the world, we are committed to helping you succeed in your career and stay connected with BCIT. For 40 years, the Alumni Association has been connecting our global community of alumni, fostering your career success, and giving back to BCIT and BCIT students through scholarships and bursaries. So please, stay in touch with the Alumni Association. And this is now as easy as downloading the new BCIT Alumni Perks app. It's free on the App Store and Google Play. <laughs> but don't do it right now. Wait till the ceremony's over. And also, stay in touch with your fellow alumni and your instructors. These are the people who can be an amazing network of support to you now and throughout your careers. And as you cross the stage to receive your credential, I presented each of you with an alumni pin. Some of you are walking really fast, so slow down. We hope you wear it with pride and know you will always be part of the BCIT community. And now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you your valedictorian, Terrell Close.
Thank you. Welcome graduates, faculty, distinguished guests, family and friends. On behalf of the graduation class, I would like to thank you for celebrating this momentous achievement with us. Many of us have put our literal blood, sweat and tears into this program, and I know that we could not have done it alone. Because of this, I would also like to thank those that have supported us along the way. As I sat preparing for today, I couldn't help but reflect on how far each of us have come. We all have our own story full of twists and turns that led us here. My own journey started in a seemingly distant industry, music. If you had told me 10 years ago while I was studying opera that I would one day be giving the valedictorian speech to the graduating class of one of the most sought after schools of health sciences, I would have said you were crazy. But in hindsight, both music and healthcare share an important skill, communication. Music involves communication between the musicians and the audience, while healthcare involves an interplay between the professionals and their clients. Early in the program, I remember observing my instructor assess a patient. There was so much artistry and finesse in the way she carefully coaxed out the information she needed while leaving room for the patient to voice their concerns. It was like a duet, each voice giving and taking to find harmony. Like music, working in healthcare can be a calling and a passion. It is not as simple as clocking in and clocking out. Our interactions matter. Our decisions matter. A patient may, may be one of the thousands we may see over our careers, but we can be that one person that they remember. The one that held their hand when they cried, the one that gave them time when they needed it, or the one that took their complaint seriously and advocated for care that reflected their needs, concerns, and values. BCIT has prepared us to do this. I still remember one of my first days of clinical, the one where our only goal was to introduce ourselves and take a pulse. <laughs> Not even a full set of vital signs, literally just a pulse. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I entered and exited the room three times before finally mustering up the courage to introduce myself. You see, my patient had family in there and I didn't understand how what I could do could possibly be important enough to interrupt. But through the course of the program, I began to see how I could bring something valuable to the table. Nursing gave me a venue to find my voice. Throughout my life, I have spent a lot of time feeling anxious, scared, and inadequate. But when I put on scrubs and step onto the ward, I am strong. BCIT has taught me to be, because in this field, we need to be, because our patients need us to be. As we move into our careers, I would like us to remember to have courage. We must continue to learn, to speak up for those who need us, to boldly ask questions, and to ask for help when we need it. No one can know everything, and when we acknowledge our weaknesses, we are prioritizing our patients. We have all grown so much and have come so far. We have overcome hurdles, studied hard, and have conquered one of the most intensive schools around. So before I conclude, I would like to remind my fellow graduates to take a moment, acknowledge your journey, and celebrate. Move forward in your careers and know that BCIT has prepared you to be a meaningful member of the healthcare team. Please join me in congratulating the 2020 graduation class. Thank you. Thank you, Terrell, for inspiring us and for being such an uh, amazing representative of BCIT. I think that we'll be calling on you for future speeches. <laughs> <laughs> Today you graduate with your Bachelor of Science in Nursing, and Terrell as co-founder and first president of the BCIT Student Nurse Association. I like that. Um, you've made a lasting contribution to BCIT, and through this organization, you've helped bring in speakers and organize workshops on issues such as global health, marginalized communities, and the opioid crisis. You are also instrumental in communicating information about the various specialty nursing options to level four students prior to their level five uh, selections, and you kept them calm during that time. <laughs> This allowed those students with particular interest in nursing specialty to be more informed and spend time during their preceptorship engaged in that particular specialty. As one of your nominators wrote, Terrell is a natural leader, well liked by her peers and models of behaviors that we are thrilled to see in our nursing students. You've been a huge asset to BCIT during your time here and we're so proud to have you as an alumni. 
Please thank Terrell again. Thank you, Terrell and Kathy. All right, now it's time to celebrate with our graduates. But before they go, I've got a few reminders. So Leader Frames is available just outside the hall here if you'd like to have your credential professionally framed today, which was the thing in that folder that a lot of people didn't want to take back from me. Uh, <laughs> but you can get it framed today, which is awesome. Um, Goldfish Photo Booth is also out in the foyer. Uh, for instant photos that look awesome on social media. Um, Artona will be available for studio portraits of graduates and their families, which is also kind of a cool idea. Um, they are located upstairs in room 3040. You can follow the signs. Uh, I also want to remind you that, of course, there is a video of the ceremony. It'll be available online in a day or two. All you have to do is go to bcit.ca slash convocation, and you'll be directed from there. And as I mentioned earlier, you can download it too. Everyone is invited to join us for refreshments uh, following this ceremony. So in a matter of moments, the reception is in the gymnasium, which is right across from the auditorium here. Before you go to the reception, though, graduates, I ask that you return to the gowning area to remove your gowns before you head over there. And this I cannot stress enough. In fact, this may be the most important thing that is said on this stage today. OK, maybe not. But I, can't, <laughs> I cannot say it enough. Please move away from the doors. There's a lot of us in here, and it can get pretty congested as many of us are leaving. So make sure that there's lots of room, head to the reception, just move away from the doors because it can get really, really busy. I want to thank all of our volunteers and staff for their efforts, all the people behind the scenes that put this ceremony together. Without them, it wouldn't happen. In fact, let's give them a round of applause. And lastly, a note to those who just crossed the stage. You've completed a chapter of your journey. Congratulations. We hope that BCIT continues to be a part of your future as you grow and develop in your chosen field. I wish you absolutely the very best. Thanks. <laughs> our processions will now leave the auditorium. First, our platform party, followed by our faculty, and then our graduates. I ask everyone now to stand and remain standing until our graduates have departed. Thank you very much.